Welcome back. All right, so let us uh, do a career video today looking at Vinnie Le Cavalier and making sure that all the details that we've got in here are as accurate as, as can be. Uh, because there's a lot of story here with Vinnie Le Cavalier. He's the number one draft pick in 1998 by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa Bay right now is a stable franchise run really well. Good general manager, good planning, good roster. Everything's good, right? Their scouting's fantastic. This was not always the case. Uh, Tampa Bay's had their colorful owners, including one who dubbed Vinny LeCavalier as the Michael Jordan of hockey. Spoiler alert, he was not, and that raises expectations to a level he can't reach. Uh, and so, for LeCavalier going into his first year, well, good luck. And he plays all 82 games that first year, 13 goals, 15 assists, 28 points. So now you've got a team that's mired around the bottom of the league. You've got a team that ownership's not fantastic. Uh, management decisions aren't necessarily fantastic either. And then the question comes up of, did they put Le Cavalier into the NHL before he was ready? The 13 goals in his first year has people concerned about whether or not he might be a bust. Was he brought in too early? So when we hear these about all these other draft picks who committed the league now, it's an old conversation. It's a conversation that's existed for decades. His second year quiets some of those concerns. 80 games played, 25 goals, 42 assists, 67 points as we hit the 99-2000 season. So he's doing well. 2000-2001, he does well too. Uh, only 68 games uh, due to injury, but 23 goals, 28 assists, 51 points. And you can see some of what's going to make Le Cavalier a star in the NHL, not as consistently as you will when he becomes a star. And then, frustratingly, in 0 2 he has a rough year. 76 games, 20 goals, 17 assists, 37 points. And it's interesting because... When we see young players have a really rough setback of a year, you will always hear people saying, you know what, I knew he's a flash in the pan. I look at Pedersen, I look at Konechny as just two examples off the top of my head, where people will say, oh yeah, no, flash in the pan, he's not going to be a star. Nope. And so for Le Cavalier coming out of that season, things don't necessarily look that great, but he has career high numbers the next year. Uh, 2002, 2003, 80 games played, 33 goals, 45 assists, 78 points. Also, that is a year that Tampa finally gets to the playoffs. 11 games, 3 goals, 3 assists, 6 points. Vinny LeCavalier was also in an All-Star game that year. That's his first. So, 03-04, 81 games played. His numbers take a bit of a hit. 32 goals, 34 assists, 66 points. I think he's okay with that, though, because he wins the Stanley Cup. 23 games played on the run to the cup, 9 goals, 7 assists, 16 points. And so we go into the lockout wiped out season of 0405, which costs Tampa Bay a chance at perhaps repeating as Stanley Cup champions. So along with the implementation of the salary cap, the Tampa Bay Lightning re-signed Le Cavalier. Four years, $27.5 million. So he's well paid. Uh, but he shows that that contract's a bit of a, a bargain his first year. 80 games played, 35 goals, 40 assists, 75 points. So 35 goals is a career high to that point. In the playoffs, just the five games, one goal, three assists, four points. Again, Tampa Bay in 5 6 not the same team they were in 3 4 And we'll never know whether or not they might have repeated as cup champs. 6 7 this is the best year Le Cavalier has personally. 82 games 52 goals. It's his only 50-goal season. He leads the league in that category. 56 assists, 108 points, which is third overall. So that's where you can start saying, not necessarily Michael Jordan of hockey, but pretty pretty good star player of hockey at that point. In the playoffs, just the six games played, five goals, two assists, seven points. So he wins the Rocket Richard Trophy. He's a second-team All-Star. He's fourth in heart voting, and he's an All-Star. 2007-2008, plays 81 games, 40 goals, which is ninth, 52 assists, 92 points. He wins the King Clancy Trophy, and he's at the All-Star Game again. But Tampa Bay, the team, is having some issues. And so they're going to need to fix these, and so they decide they're going to get rid of uh, Jay Feaster as GM. July 13th, 2008, by my research, two days after Feaster's gone as GM, they announce an 11-year extension for Vinny Le Cavalier. 11 years. Uh, it starts in 2009-2010, so they're even a full season out from this needing to necessarily happen. And they say he's taking less money than he would have got on the market, and he's, he's, he's being, you know, helpful to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And at the time, you can kind of see that, right? 
He's coming off a 92-point season. He's still in his 20s. And so 11 years means he retires as a Tampa Bay Lightning player. That's the plan. And for these new owners, it makes sense to, to take the face of the franchise and say he's not going anywhere. He's going to stay here. Interestingly enough, Barry Melrose was also part of the new plan. Barry Melrose lost 16 games and was coaching career with the Tampa Bay Lightning before he's fired. Uh, things did not go the way that Tampa Bay hoped that they would. So 8 9 77 games played for Le Cavalier, 29 goals, 38 assists, 67 points. He does go to the All-Star game again, but his numbers have fallen off. 2009-2010, the goal scoring takes a bit more of a hit, but the assists come back somewhat. 82 games, 24 goals, 46 assists, 70 points. And yeah, Tampa Bay, it's been, it's been a bit of a slog, but 2010-2011, the team gets better again. 65 games played for Le Cavalier, 25 goals, 29 assists, 54 points. And then the playoffs gets younger. Uh, 18 games, 6 goals, 13 assists, 19 points. As he looks great in the playoffs. And it's a nice long run for the Tampa Bay Lightning. 2011-2012, it's a setback. Uh, 64 games, 22 goals, 27 assists, 49 points. So then we have the lockout shortened season 2012-2013, right? And he plays 39 games, 10 goals, 22 assists, 32 points. Clearly, that 11-year contract is an issue. There are compliance buyouts. So basically, these are buyouts where it doesn't mean you have a cap penalty. There is no cap penalty. Now, because he's bought out with seven years and $45 million left, uh, that means it's going to get paid out over 14 years. And he gets a nice big chunk of that up front. He gets a lot of money up front. So they buy him out. It is a compliance buyout on June 27th. So as frustrating as it must have been for them and some of their fans, they, they have to you know stay under the cap and all that. So that $7.7 .7 million in cap space can go elsewhere. And so he's a free agent, not for long. July 6th, he signs a five-year, $22.5 million contract with the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Vinny LeCavalier, I think, made more money in that that, that period of time between June 27th and July 6th than I think any any other player has in a year. He earned a lot of money. He got he got a ton of money. And so his first year in Philly, his numbers offensively don't get back to where they were. So that five-year, $22.5 million contract doesn't look fantastic right away. So 69 games, 20 goals, 17 assists, 37 points. In the playoffs, seven games, one goal, one assist, two points. The interesting thing is, that when he signs that contract with Philly, it was a bit of a bidding war to get him there. So they outbid other teams. This is where the bidding on UFA Day can get really frustrating uh, to watch as a fan. Because it's like gambling, right? Where it's like, you know when you're bidding on something on eBay and you're like, all right, it's only going to be 20 bucks. And somebody else goes to 21 and you're like, fine, I'll go to 22. Before you know it, you're paying 50 bucks for something that's worth 10. So... I think this happens in hockey. I think this happens in sports where you'll see a player that maybe a GM says, you know what, we'll, we'll throw a million dollars at this guy. Maybe we get him. And then they end up spending more in the end. They go, well, fine. We still got our player. And I, I do think that happens with free agents. So it's, it's a good system for players. It's one that for GMs, I think this is why now we have more capologists and there's more people around them advising them because it can get out of control quickly. That second year in Philly, he only plays 57 games, 8 goals, 12 assists, 20 points. It's really fallen off by this point for Vinny LeCavalier. He plays 7 games in 2015-2016 with Philly. 7 games, 1 assist in those 7 games. And on January 6th, he's traded with Luke Shen to the LA Kings for a 2016 third, which Philly will use to draft Carson Torinsky and Jordan Wheel, who had a decent little run there with Philadelphia as well. So he plays 42 games in L.A., 10 goals, 7 assists, 17 points, which again, not bad, comparatively speaking with the previous season in the playoffs. He plays 5 games, 1 goal, 1 assist, 2 points. Vinny LeCavalier would retire after the season was done. And yeah, it was a, a pretty, pretty good career. 1,212 games overall, 421 goals, 528 assists for 949 points. And I remember when he hit 900 points in the discussion of whether or not he'd ever hit 1,000 but it was obvious at that point that he had already uh, offensively taken a hit. So for him to get to 1,000 points, he would have needed at least two more years. 75 games in the playoffs, 26 goals, 30 assists, 56 points. His name comes up a lot as a player who, you know, maybe should be in the Hall of Fame, belongs in the Hall of Fame. He's got the Stanley Cup ring. He's got a Maurice Richard trophy. He's got a King Clancy trophy. And he was top three in the NHL scoring in 2006-2007. 
I think the reason he didn't get in the hall, he's got those two fantastic years. Outside of that, he was a very good player. He was a solid player and a first liner for Tampa. But did he rise to the level of being a Hall of Famer? To this point, we haven't seen him uh, named as a as as a Hall of Famer yet. It could still happen. It may very well still happen. Uh, but we'll see, right? So that's the question I have for people watching this. Would Vinny LeCavalier's career qualify for Hall of Fame consideration? Or is it a no? And if it's a no, let me know why. If it's a yes, let me know why in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.